Hot topic alert. Everyone has an opinion on this one and the media has definitely had a field day with the topic. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. So give me your opinion in the comments down below. What's your take on electromagnetic fields, AKA EMF, as in, do you think it's dangerous to live next to power lines or an electrical substation? I've had quite a few experiences with showing homes that back up to power lines and substations. And from my experience, these homes tend to take a little bit longer to sell. And usually the price is slightly discounted due to the proximity to power lines. Thank you for watching. I make a new video on life and real estate in Southwest Washington every week. So please subscribe and turn the bell on so you don't miss a video. I have been selling homes in the great Vancouver area for the past 10 years. So if you are considering a move to this area, I would love to connect. Don't be shy, reach out anytime. I have a whole team ready to help you make this huge move. All right, speech over, let's dive into this topic. Electric and magnetic fields, fields, EMFs, are invisible areas of energy often referred to as radiation that are associated with the use of electrical power in various forms of natural and man-made lighting. The strength of an EMF is directly related to the amount of electricity in use, which is the current, and to the electrical potential, which is the voltage, in the electric circuit. That means that the more current or the higher the voltage, the greater the EMF which could be generated. EMFs are usually grouped into one of two categories by their frequency, non-ionizing, which is low level radiation, which is generally perceived as harmless to humans, and then ionizing, which is a high level radiation, which has the potential for cellular and DNA damage. Examples of non-ionizing radiation are microwaves, computers, Wi-Fi networks, cell phones, Bluetooth devices, power lines, and MRIs. Ionizing, the harmful radiation, includes sunlight, x-rays, and some gamma rays. So are EMFs harmful to your health? During the 1990s, most EMF research focused on extremely low frequency exposures stemming from conventional power sources, such as power lines, electrical substations, or home appliances. While some of these studies showed a possible link between EMF field strength and an increased risk for childhood leukemia, their findings indicated that such an association was pretty weak. The few studies that have been conducted on adults show no evidence of a link between EMF exposure and adult cancers, such as leukemia, brain cancer, and breast cancer. What if you live near a power line? It is important to remember that the strength of a magnetic field decreases dramatically with the increasing distance from the source. This means that the strength of the field reaching a house or structure will be significantly weaker than it is at its point of origin. For example, a magnetic field measuring 57 and a half milligauss immediately beside a 230 kilovolt transmission line measures just 7.1 milligauss at a distance of 100 feet and then only 1.8 milligauss at a distance of 200 feet. Recently, I had a client interested in a house that backed up to an electrical substation. Hi, if you're watching this, everything else about this house was perfect, except for the concern over the dang substation. Before ruling it out, we decided to learn more about EMFs and figure out how much radiation was coming off of that substation. I learned something new, which was very exciting, which was that you can contact the electrical company and they will actually send someone to you with a handy dandy little EMF meter that measures the EMF level. I set this up and I met an electrical engineer at the house and we took a few measurements. His electromagnetic field meter displayed measurements in milligauss. It measures the strength of the magnetic field. So five gauss and below are considered safe levels of static mag magnetic field exposure. The first thing we did is go stand right next to the substation, we were right there, where the measurement was 6.3. In the backyard at the fence line of the house, the level was 1.2. Inside the house, the level dropped to 0.5. And then we crossed the street, so we were you know, all the way across the street from the substation, and it dropped down to 0.3. The power guy let me know that there is usually 
more EMF exposure in a home due to our own electronics than you would get from the power lines or a substation. So once he said that, I dragged him over to my house <laughs> to tell me what the EMF levels were. And guess what? It was 0.3 in my family room due to all of our electronics. We don't have any power lines near our home, so this was not a significant difference from the house backing up to the substation. Uh, we turned on my oven and that reader went up to like over a thousand. So I learned a lot from this experience. I hope that is helpful to you as well. Overall, I think if you're considering a house next to power lines or a substation, the biggest concern is cosmetic and resale. First, is it going to bother you to look at it every day? If it's going to drive you crazy, then obviously that's not going to be a good fit for you. It's not going to be worth it. If it doesn't bother you, then keep in mind that you may not make top dollar when it's time to sell that house because the next buyer might have the same hesitations that you have about owning a home backing up to a substation or under a power line, near a power line. Most builders and sellers are aware that having power lines or a substation is a disadvantage and they price their homes appropriately. If they have not, I'm going to figure that out and I will help you negotiate a good price so that you don't lose money when it's your turn to sell. All right, give me what you know on this topic, your feedback in the comments down below. Looking forward to hearing from you.